Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Charles, because today is the um, 6th of April 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's morning recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly um, have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the Content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so I hope you're all feeling nice and relaxed after the weekend. Um, but yep, guys, uh, let's get back into the markets. Now, um, as always, before we jump into the charts, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel here, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com. Uh, Dot com and click on the research tab right there on the top. <clears throat> so now then, um, as always, um, also as it became kind of a little <clears throat> tradition, I would say, um, the let's let's quickly have a look at what's happening in terms of the uh, coronavirus globally. Um, so yep, the number continues to rise. Uh, there's a really bad situation in the U.S. Um, so well. Um, well, of course, uh, that's understandable because they, uh, let's say, let's put it this way, they took a little bit of too long to take any serious measures. Now it's a little bit, um, uh, they're suffering from that a little bit, as we can see by the numbers here as well. So um, still, Italy uh, remains the leader in terms of uh, total deaths. Um, however, it uh, during the weekend, it um, lost its second place uh, to Spain. Now, Spain has risen in, in the amount of infections uh, quickly here, and uh, but still they remain on the uh, on second place in terms of deaths. So basically, for now, let's see how these developments are going to continue um, happening. And uh, yep, let's keep an eye on, on and everything. China, as we as we already understand and see that China is managing to control to maintain the spread. Um, some Asian countries as well are doing doing good. Uh, South Korea South Korea is showing per, uh, fantastic performance. So. Um, yep, so basically the, <clears throat> I would say the old world and the new world um, have something to, um, let's say, uh, f f have from where to learn, I would say like this, because again, like I said, in Asia, they have managed to uh, control and these spread a little bit. Let's put it this way. Um, now then, let's jump into the charts. Uh, so the German DAX. This is what I wanted to start off uh, with. And uh, the German DAX here is um, well. I would say it still remains in the in this little area, this little territory. I talked about this uh, the, this index last week. Um, basically, as long as it stays inside this little range here. Um, roughly between the 10,000 mark on the upside and the, well, I do have a level here, the 9,461, but uh, the more comfortable level for us after which we could consider the downside is the 9,140-41 zone. I talked about this one, so basically uh, this is the these are the two levels that we're going to be keeping close eye on for now. Um, looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the index is trying to make its way higher. Um, currently, the price is balancing around the 9,870 <coughs> 9, zone, so basically we're going to have a nice um, opening gap here to the upside. Um, but again, we're still below this uh, psychological 10,000 zone. So we need to see uh, what we need to see here is a nice daily close um, above this territory. And then we could aim for higher levels for now. 
we're just gonna remain uh, cautious here and uh, well we're gonna continue monitoring these two levels um, of course the this little uprising right now in equities um, is due to the fact that um, Europe is managing as uh, well let's put it this way some there is a bit of, of uh, there is a bit of a slowdown in, in new infections so uh, traders might see this as a nice opportunity um, from the technical side just to also quick mentioning here on the, on the DAX from the technical side basically uh, for now it's kind of working in line with the idea of a, of a possible uh, bullish flag pattern here so basically we have our poll and uh, this, uh, this sideways activity kind of was forming this little flag so in a way, uh, we could see something like this a pop higher, but again, as I said, we need to see a nice daily close above the that 10,000 mark first, and then we'll aim for higher levels. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the FTSE 100. Now here, a similar story. Um, also, the cash index is on a rise right now. It's currently trading at around 5,540 zone. Um, again, we'll also have a nice little opening gap here to the upside. Um, previously, I talked about this this level here, the 5,500 mark. But as you can see, this kind of got violated, and in a way, the uh, index kind of really ignored this territory. So, um, in a way, in terms of the downside for now, to be honest, we'll probably uh, be very careful now uh, we could keep an eye on the on the low of last week which is around the 5352 territory here and then maybe we could consider some downside but again as I said for now we are seeing a bit of a, an upside here an upside move here on on the mm, uh, on the FTSE um, however to get comfortable with higher levels we need to see this push above the uh, 5815 territory so yep keep your eyes on this one for now guys uh let's let's be very careful and cautious because this is a very unstable market so uh, so yeah, let's let's not overdo it um, and let's wait for that confirmation break. Uh, WTI oil. So um, here the situation is uh, quite interesting. Um, so last week, of course, we managed to close the week well in the positive territory. Uh, we managed to travel above this, not only travel but also stay and close the. Uh, the daily candle, the weekly candle above the 26.08 level, and this level I talked about was is the lowest point of uh, 2016, basically. So we were, I was talking about this when I was what I was saying that in a way, if we get a nice close above this, this increases the chances of a potential a larger correction to the upside. So for now, this is exactly what we're gonna uh, look look out for. Um, again, even if we we see a bit of a correction here, if this uh, if the commodity stays above this. Uh, 26.08 level then yes uh, we will we will aim for uh, for further upside again only up until this downside line taken from the high of um, the 8th of January so keep your eyes on this one in terms of the downside pretty straightforward we need to see a drop below the that psychological uh, 20 territory and to be honest not only a drop we would like to see a nice daily close below this as well so keep your eyes on this one guys for now it's leaning more towards the upside from the very short term perspective uh, but yep let's keep an eye on some of these levels again like I said if it continues to trade above the 26.08 zone then yes we will aim uh, for the upside Bitcoin. Now then, uh, I haven't looked at this one for quite a while, and basically here it continues to grind slowly, grind grind higher. However, as you can see, uh, the mm, the crypto remains below that downside line. So in a way. Of course, as long as it uh, remains below this downside line, then yes, we could continue uh, targeting the downside. However, uh, of course, be very careful here, guys, right now. I would say right now it's a very uh, tricky situation here. I mean, it, on one hand, yes, it is trying to, <coughs> excuse me, trying to make its way higher. Um, but um, but as, like I said, we need to see a break of this downside line and ideally a close above at, at least a daily candle, uh, not even a four hour candle, at least a daily candle. We need to see a nice good close above this downside line and then we could aim for higher levels. Uh, for now, it's uh, like I said, it's 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 nowhere. It's it's although yes, from the very short term perspective, it is trying to climb higher. 
However, uh, we will be we'll be very ca careful and cautious because, as you can see, we do have this nice steep upside line here. But if this suddenly gets a break here and we see a drop below the uh, 6,442, 41 zone, roughly around here, then yes, we will aim for some downside. However, today, right now, we're seeing a bit of an ups an up move. Uh, but in order, let's say, to get comfortable with higher levels, as I said first, we need to see a nice daily close above the down this downside line taken from the high of the uh, 24th of February um, uh, and also ideally a push above the uh, 7,292 zone which is the high of uh, 2nd of April then yes uh, this could do the trick for more buyers and we could start uh, considering levels like like these here the high of the 9th of March which is around the 8,187 8, and then yes we could take it from there guys for now uh, like I said we are at a very interesting spot um, but let's be very careful and uh, cautious so okay um, now then jumping into a few pairs very quickly USD CAD now here let me just jump back into a four hour chart um, Last week I talked about this downside line, which uh, kind of continued to hold. Um, but as you can see, the uh, the downside line it got violated and uh, uh, it got violated it, it was broken but then the pair quickly drifted drifted back below it um, now we can get rid of it to be honest because it's no longer in use uh, no longer useful for us um, but as, as you can see still the same levels remain now uh, what I was talking about when I was talking about the upside this is the level that we we're looking for uh, we're looking for a break um, and maybe even uh, ideally a four hour candle close above this uh, 1.4325 territory here and then we could aim for for a further upside however for now uh, it's like I said it's a little bit tricky um, it's in, in a way some of you probably could see here uh, maybe a possible um, a symmetrical triangle but um, let's oh, let me just put this one on the chart uh, just in just in case however <clears throat> however I don't I wouldn't like to kind of overcomplicate things here a little uh, because again too many lines too many uh, too many of everything to keep an eye on so basically even if we see a breakthrough one of the sides of this symmetrical triangle still uh, in order to get a little bit more comfortable with uh, either the downside or the upside so with the upside we, we would still need to get a nice four hour candle close above the 1.4325 zone and then we could aim for higher levels but in terms of the downside even if we see a drop below the lower side of this triangle then uh, of course we will start considering lower levels if we see a drop below the 1.4075 zone roughly around here um, but just to even to get a little bit even more comfortable uh, this is the uh, this is the level that we were uh, watching previously as you can see kind of continue to hold nicely so uh, a drop below the 1.3986 could uh, do the trick here for uh, for more sellers so keep your eyes on this one for now uh, GBP USD so here the situation is quite interesting so uh, let me just jump back into a daily chart quickly now <clears throat> the uh, the pair uh, yeah last week I was talking about basically this potential uh, flag pattern but uh, what I was also saying that we need to see a confirmation break above this barrier here first the 1.2485 before we could consider some upside because even though it was forming somewhat of a bullish uh, bullish flag here uh, you can see that this is what I was also mentioning that uh, we could see the opposite way happening here uh, it could drift lower it could wipe out some traders and then reverse from here and then push to the upside so <clears throat> for now, excuse me. For now, the pair is getting a nice hold up here near the uh, the low of uh, the 8th of October, or in, in other words, the lowest point of October 2019. Uh, let's see if it can continue ho to hold. Um, if it does, we could see a nice rebound here and push higher. But as I've mentioned, uh, the more comfortable level for us after which we could consider uh, the upside would be this 1.2485 zone. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, let's see how this is going to play out. But uh, even with the downside, even if it drops below the 1.2195 zone here this this lowest point of October um, still the, all this territory would be somewhat of a neutral one for us because 
for, <clears throat> for us to get a little bit more comfortable with the downside we would first like to see a drop below the 1.1950 zone that's the the low of 2019 and uh, also the low of 2016 so uh, I'll, basically we would like to see a drop below this territory first and then we could aim for lower levels for now um, again we'll be, we're very careful and cautious here we're waiting for that confirmation break uh, GBP euro so I haven't looked at this one this one for quite a while now and uh, basically this uh, this has managed to complete our or should I say reach our target let me just jump into a four hour chart so we managed to reach this area here the 1.1305 we even actually overshot it and uh, the pair drifted higher however uh, it's now tr drifting back down again so <coughs> excuse me so, so <clears throat> do I do I do apologize for my voice, guys. Um, so yeah, uh, not really feeling well. But um, now coming back to this, um, of course, you can see that the the pair drifted higher and uh, is currently kind of balancing around this 200 EMA on the four-hour chart and balancing around this 1.1305 zone. So. In a way, if it continues to oscillate around here, around this territory, uh, but remains um, above the uh, remains above this uh, upside support line, now it's still we could remain somewhat bullish, and we could continue targeting the upside. Now, uh, however, uh, be very careful for those who are more on the cautious side. Um, what you could do is just instead of kind of waiting for such a move, you could just wait for um, a push above of the um, the high of, of, of last week, uh, which is roughly around the uh, 1.1440. So if we do get a nice push above the 1.1440, then yes, uh, we will aim for uh, we will aim for for some further upside because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and uh, yep, more buyers could join in here. So, but if you're uh, more adventurous and you're looking for something uh, here interesting, um, uh, more risky, I would say. Um, then yes, we could keep an eye. You could keep an eye on this upside line because if it holds, um, then uh, then yep, we could see some more uh, some more buying. Um, however, in this situation, probably have a uh, have a tight stop loss um, and uh, somewhere near this near this upside line because if we see uh, then a reversal back down, this could actually uh, break the upside line because this if let's say imagine the situation if we drift lower here somewhere uh, it rebounds from this upside line starts pushing higher uh, you have entered somewhere around here and it starts pushing higher but then it stops around here somewhere basically it fails to move all the way back here to this 1.1440 zone um, and then starts reversing to the downside now this is where you, your uh, kind of alarm bells should start ringing because uh, basically the uh, the pair would be forming a, uh, a lower high and basically the, the, basically this could lead to some lower levels now I do have this level here is highlighted as the potential uh, breakout for the downside yes of course this this still kind of would be somewhat interesting for us however um, another interesting level to consider uh, would be right here basically this low the low of the first of April and uh, um, or even actually I do apologize um, I would actually because this is going to be too close so now uh, the low of the 31st of March now this is where we're gonna probably consider the downside from so 1.1164 um, so in a way we could keep an eye on all this zone right here um, and uh, this 1.1110 and the 1.1164 the, the the zone between these two levels and uh, if, we, if we see a drop below the 1.1164 then yes we will start considering uh, deeper extensions to the downside so basically something like this could be possible again for now uh, be very careful with this one as I mentioned again, uh, with for, for those who are more on the cautious side, you could just wait for a break above the uh, 1.1440. But for those who are more on the risky side, uh, yes, you could keep an eye on this upside line. But however, have a tight stop loss, guys. Um, <clears throat> and yes, it, but if suddenly we start breaking this this upside line and we see a drop below the 1.1164, uh, then well, we'll shift our attention towards uh, lower levels. Uh, Euro. 
uh, Euro South African rent. Now I talked about this one on Friday. Basically, it's something that you probably don't look at it very often. But however, I just wanted to quickly show you what uh, what kind of madness is happening here. Uh, basically, who is trying to short this one is kind of let's say getting stopped out uh, unless you have um, a huge balance and you allow yourself big uh, moves like this. But Again, for now, guys, looking at this picture, it, this is not really looking good here for the South African Rand. Um, looking at the weekly chart, even, you can see the, the, the crazy move that we had here. Um, and of course, don't get me wrong, at some point, this will reverse to the downside. However, um, for now, this is a bit tricky. I mean, it could hit the psychological kind of 21 territory um, and then, then maybe reverse down, but or even it could continue traveling further north, uh, wipe out all the all the short sellers um, so that's why look at this one I mean for now keep your eyes on this on this um, on this upside line here uh, it's a bit of a tentative one but nevertheless we'll keep an eye on it but um, basically here we need to see some sort of a, a clear signal um, this is um, a pair which probably you could uh, trade for a few days basically um, or keep the position running for a few few days or um, and uh, but however again we need to see uh, we need to see some sort of a clear uh, reversal signal uh, before we could uh, aim for lower levels for now. Uh, it is a little bit on the up, upper side. I mean, it, it, it could in a way drift higher. Um, however, of course, you can see by the oscillators here on the four hour chart, the RSI, the MACD, we are seeing a bit of a, um, a bit of an over, overbought situation here on the RSI. Um, but uh, again, don't get me wrong. It might uh, it might hang around here for quite a while above this uh, 70 territory here, and uh, well, this this could continue drifting north. So that's why be very careful, guys. Be very cautious. For now, uh, it, wait for some sort of a confirmation reversal signal because for now there's no none, um, and then we could maybe aim for this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 5th of March. So yep, something to consider, something to look forward to uh, very interesting developments here very interesting pair but again like I said looking at the daily chart here you can see that um, well to be honest there's no uh, clear reversal signal yet although we are quite overstretched to the upside even on the weekly chart and probably on the monthly chart as well let me just quickly double check that well of course yes um, so um, however uh, yeah again it, it, it's not nothing stopping it from kind of trying to reach that uh, 21 barrier. So, um, now then jumping into EuroCAD, something that I've looked at uh, looked at last week on Friday, and basically I just wanted to quickly update you here on what's happening. So basically, yes, we are still hanging around above this key area of support. Uh, on Friday, the pair tried to overcome this barrier, but got held here uh, near the 1.52 territory, 1.5207. So um, I talked about this one. That was that's the uh, basically the low. <coughs> That's basically the low of um, of March, and if I'm not mistaken, no, that's the lowest point of, of 20th of March. Um, so yeah, the pair drifted lower, tested almost tested that area, rebounded, <coughs> and drifted uh, back up here. So basically, long story short, this territory still remains the one for us to watch right now because if we do get a nice drop below this, then yes, um, we will aim for lower levels. And what I was mentioning and what I was saying uh, last week was that if we get a nice, um, a nice at least a f at least a four-hour candle close here below the uh, 1.5207, then yes, we will aim for further declines because this would confirm a forthcoming lower low, and more sellers could be joining in. Uh, our next target could be a around the 1.4977 zone. But again, for now, be very careful. Um, here, uh, in terms of the upside, uh, well, we are, uh, we do have this downside line. Basically, we are, what we are forming here is a nice uh, potential uh, descending triangle here uh, with the upper side of it being this downside line taken from the high of the 19th of March. So in other words, we would need to see a break of this, this downside line in order to kind of aim for higher levels for now. Uh, even if it travels higher here, all this territory would be somewhat of a neutral one for us. And uh, yep, we'll wait. We'll just sit this one out and wait 
uh, for a break through one of the sides here. So I do understand that we might be missing out here on some moves. However, we rather be safe than sorry, and uh, we will uh, we rather wait for that. Uh, that real confirmation um, after which we could maybe see some sort of a, a good directional move. And finally, Euro USD. So here, these, uh, as you can see, I, I talked about this one on Friday. Um, <clears throat> Um, the pair still overall remains below this downside line taken from the high of the uh, 29th of March. Let me just correct this a little bit. Uh, 29th of March, yes. Um, now, it got a hold up here near this 1.0777 zone. I talked about this level. Uh, this is the lowest point of, of February this year. Um, you can see that the pair found some support and now is correcting a little bit higher. So for now, it's working according to the plan. This is what I said, what I talked about on Friday. Um, so it's rebounding. It's pushing even back above the 1.0819 zone. So in a way, there is a good chance we could see maybe even a test of this uh, of this downside line here again. So so if we do see a test of it, and if it holds the rate once again, uh, well, we could prepare ourselves for another round of selling. Because for us, in terms of the upside, uh, we would like to see a push back above the 1.0888 zone and then uh, of course uh, we could consider some higher levels for now it's um, yes any move higher could still be seen as a temporary correction uh, before another leg of selling um, and uh, again like I said as long as this downside line remains intact uh, we will continue aiming for the downside for those who are more on the cautious side uh, just wait for a drop below the 1.0777 because a drop below this territory would confirm a forthcoming lower low and especially if we see a four hour candle close below this then yes uh further declines could be possible here guys so uh, yep, be very careful, be very cautious. Um, we will then aim for the 1.0744 area, um, but we do have a bunch of uh, potential support levels here, um, which we could consider. But to be honest, let's not overcrowd the chart right now. Uh, let's see how all this is going to play out. And um, yep, for now, like I said, even though we are seeing a bit of a correction here uh, to the upside, uh, it's again this is still could be seen still could be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of selling especially if it uh, if this downside line remains intact so guys i hope you really found it useful um thank you very much for sticking around and watching until the end i hope you guys have a fantastic uh start to a new trading week um be very careful be very cautious keep your eyes on the news guys uh join uh, or i wouldn't say join but uh, for now just catch my video uh later on uh, my traders tea time 14 uh, sorry 13 15 gmt time um and uh yep uh like i said somewhere around that time somewhere maybe a little bit uh, a few minutes after that um because let allow me give me some time to upload um however uh guys thank you very much for watching this one thank you very much for listening to me and uh, uh thank you very much for all your support and uh for all your likes um and um uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much, guys. And I'll, uh, like I said, catch my video a little bit later, around 13, 15 GMT. And, uh, yeah, we'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones, and we'll see how the market is playing out. So thank you very much, guys, and bye-bye.